Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So it's going to be the three card oracle today. Clear your mind. Uh, take a deep breath, relax, put the questions forward in your mind. Think about even now what card of the three you might want to choose or cards if you're going to choose more than one or what question for all three of the cards you may have. So do that now and uh, we'll get started. So this is Llewellyn's Classic Tarot. Uh, book by Barbara Moore and illustrations by Eugene Smith. Love the box that this comes in. It's got that neat uh, magnetic clasp on there that I'm just a sucker for. The book is very good. I mean, it's a full color book. It's got very good um, suggestions for how you can use these cards in the divination. And then it talks a little bit in here also about uh, Barbara Moore, Eugene Smith. So I, I like the book. The cards I mean, everything about this works. You can, you've got a little ribbon. You have to pull the book out, and then it double, does double duty to help get the cards out. And let me show you those. Now, if I understand correctly, the idea that Llewellyn had is that this is the right of weight system, but it is a clearer, uh, less cluttered um, uh, images for the uh, divination uh, of the cards. So that's apparently was his uh, remit to um, the uh, illustrator or the artist, uh, Eugene Smith. I like to spread them out like this so you can get a chance to, you know, just look at the cards if you don't look at cards a lot or maybe you're thinking about buying some cards and you're thinking about these and you run across this and this gives you an idea if you'd like to have them. I don't know. I just like to spread them out this way. It's an alternative way of shuffling them and it works really well if you're doing a reading and you have someone who might not feel comfortable shuffling the cards but at least you can kind of get their energy uh, into the uh, cards this way. So this is classic tarot and I like them a lot. But let's get this going for this three card oracle today and see uh, what the cards can do for us. Um, my best suggestion is that you really just take a minute to clear your mind. You know, really think, that's a terrible shuffle, really think about what it is that you want uh, to ask a question about. If it's one one situation or, a, or two or a few, this will be a three card pull. So, um, so you know, that gives you a minute. Take a deep breath. <sighs> if you hear that, let it out. Remember, you can stop this tape uh, once the uh, oracle cards have been revealed and, um, and give yourself a minute to decide which of the card or cards uh, you, know, you want to address uh, specific uh, inquiries to. So let's divide this into three stacks since we have a three card oracle today. And see what happens. Three cards right off the top for this uh, divination. One, two, three. And then what I'll do is, uh, besides uh, using these cards to tell us yes or no answers, hopefully, perhaps even a maybe, uh, we'll uh, uh, flush them out with a dyadic cross. So another five cards. So one, two, three. Think of your question. Clear your mind and pick a card. Remember you can stop the tape. One, two, three. Okay? So here we go. The first card is a, a two of swords. This is a, a decision that has to be made. And um, gosh, I don't, for me, this is a maybe. Uh, this is not a, a clear yes or a no for me. It may be uh, read that way for other readers or for yourself, but for me and the way I uh, work with my cards, in this instance, this is a maybe answer. Okay, so if you pick number two, then this is going to be the emperor. And this is a yes card. This emperor is going to make things happen. He rules the roost, and this is a very strong yes. Pick number three. And this is the Ace of Pentacles, another yes card. This is a great big offer of value. This could be money. This could be something that's very important in, to you or the decision that you're making. But this is, yeah, this is going to happen. Okay? So now we'll turn these two over. And we'll just concentrate on this one card, which will be the signifier for the Dyadic Cross. So the Two of Swords. Now the Two of Swords 
is is just that it's about making the decision and for me you know um these uh, swords represent truth and justice um and and moving forward uh, no matter which way you go uh, you're going to end up uh, where you're supposed to be but it's just a matter of how you get there so uh, i kind of liken it to saying uh, you know let's uh, take our drive and someone says well i want to go this way and someone else says that way but you both have the same end destination in mind. So how you get there um, it, it just determines what the journey is going to be like, not whether you're going to get to the end destination. Okay? So two of swords, two of swords. It's kind of a maybe card. Um, and we'll see how that works for us today. So let's take five more cards to finish out this uh, diet cross. And I'm going to back this up a little bit, get a, a card out of here that's one two, three, four, and five. Okay, I'm going to take these, put them over here to work on those two cards, and then we'll see uh, what sort of uh, message we get uh, from the cards for this. So two of, two of swords, uh, these are truth, justice. Uh, you, you need to make a decision, and, and you will, okay? The uh, challenge to this two of swords as a signifier then is the lovers. And uh, the lovers are uh, partnerships. And this is the major arcana. So this is very important. I mean, we uh, this uh, almost says to me that you will um, find the right uh, partnership to make this happen. But uh, you're going to notice here in this card that we've got uh, the tree of life, very fruitful with the serpent up there. And then we've got this burning bush on the other side. So there's always you know, a choice of how you go about a thing, but the end result is going to be the same destination. It's just how you get there. Okay. So, uh, the challenge to making a decision is, uh, is, is picking, um, a path. Really, it's almost a repeat of what we're saying there. This is just clear, um, uh, message. The uh, base of this reading then is going to be the seven of wands. Seven of wands, you know, wands are actions, motion, uh, forward moving, um, planning, and uh, this uh, fella has has mastered these these uh, wands that are coming at him, but it doesn't make it any less of a challenge. And uh, you know, there's always this suspect that one of these plans can come up and jab him uh, in the side or trip him up. Uh, but and you'll notice that uh, even uh, in his his feet here, he's got one uh, sandal and one um, uh, foot uh, that's shoed. So you know, it's it's not the most sure. A footing that you could have. So that was the basis of this. So that's kind of how we came to this uh, to this decision point uh, is having mastered uh, these situations, but we're still not on a perfect footing. Okay. The past of this reading um, then is going to be justice. Okay. So this is what uh, we come to this decision with. We come to this decision with uh, Lady Justice holding up the truth, weighing it out on a scale, and you can be sure that uh, justice is going to be served in this. And uh, it may be that justice is, as a matter of fact, what brought us to have to make this decision. But up in the sky for this, in this Dianic Cross, is uh, the Five of Cups. You know, the Five of Cups, cups are emotion, uh, passion. And uh, the Five of Cups tells the story of someone who has spilt, you know, three of his precious cups of, of emotion. He still has a couple left, but he's really spending a lot of time just uh, uh, worrying over what he's lost. And he's traveled a long way already, or there's a long way to go still, but he's got a little sustenance to get him on the way. So uh, stop crying over spilt milk and pick up your cups and, uh, and continue your journey. So that's what's in the sky here. Um, you know, let's put that like that. Now, the likely outcome for this situation, remember, this started out as kind of a maybe, but it is going to go forward. So the uh, likely outcome, look at that, is a Nine of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles is, Pentacles are just abundance, value. This is an overabundance. This uh, person here has just got everything they need, even extra so that they have sort of, you know, the, the latest diversion of the day, in this case, would be a falcon. And uh, you wouldn't have a falcon if you weren't able to afford having it. So yeah, this is going to work out for you. It's a decision point. You have to decide which way to go. No matter which way you go, you're going to get to the end and things will be okay. Okay. Don't worry too much about it. Just put one foot in front of the other and start the journey. Okay. So that's that card right there. Now we'll move on to the rest of these uh, divinations. These three card oracles are very useful 
And um, the key to using this, the best way you, you can, is to clear your mind at the beginning of this. And, uh, and hopefully that will meld your uh, uh, consciousness with the uh, universe and uh, help you decide which cards to pull. If you chose number two, though, that's the Emperor. This is a big yes card. This is an authoritative, we're doing this, yes, this will happen. Okay? That's what we've got there. We can um, take a minute to shuffle these cards up just a little bit uh, towards the answer for this number two pick. So hope that um, that you've got your mind clear, you're ready to receive a message, and uh, and you have to decide if what I'm telling you applies. You know, but don't fool yourself. Try to decide with with an even uh, mind in hand. Okay. So we're going to take five cards out of here. This is going to be one, two three, four, five. Okay, five cards. We're going to put these guys back over here to work on that situation. And then we'll start uh, doling out the answers right here. So the emperor, great big, yes, we're, we're doing this. But it's challenged by what? It's challenged by the king of cups. The king of cups brings to us just a huge amount of emotion and uh, passion and and these are things that can definitely uh, uh, cloud uh, your decisions and but you've got to get yourself in front of any uh, misgivings that you may have understand that with with compassion and understanding that you will uh, make this thing happen you can uh, move it forward king of cups uh, is a challenge to uh, this emperor so you know Understand your passions, understand the emotions behind it, but know that you've got to get off the throne and take a step and start moving, all right? The, um, the base of this reading, then, is the Queen of Wands. And the Queen of Wands is a great big uh, uh, plan. It's a great big uh, forward-moving motion. And uh, this queen is very satisfied with the fact that she's going to, again, stand up for this throne. She's going to use this staff to steady herself, and she used this plan to steady yourself. Remember, when you have a strong plan, then you have no problem taking the steps to move forward and to get it done. And that's what this queen is going to do. And that's how she came to us. So, so that's the base of the reading. Understand that you got this. You got this. In the past of this reading is the world. And what is the world except for absolutely beginnings and endings, completions of cycles, and this is definitive. I mean, this is uh, all the options are available to you. Nothing is particularly um, uh, sinister in this. And so what brought us to this uh, place where we have to get up and get moving is that this cycle has come to a point where there, it's starting. Likely this is a new start. It's, it's beginning to start. Okay. Now in the sky for this reading, is the Seven of Pentacles. The Seven of Pentacles, and that's your, your, the you know just the highest um, uh, hope for what's going to happen here. And this is looking at what you've done, wondering, is it enough? Have I moved these things forward enough? And I've got to sneeze so bad you can't believe it. <coughs> I don't think I can cut that out with the editing. But anyway, this is a Seven of Pentacles. Have I done enough? You know, he's been fruitful. You know, a lot has has. has happened on this. He may be considering, have I harvested enough? Should I harvest a little bit more? But uh, that's what's up in the sky uh, for this situation right now. And then uh, the likely outcome for all of this is look at that, the lovers. So get somebody involved with this decision. If you can't make a move, partner with someone or, or with some information or some, some something to give you guidance, look because everything you need is available, especially in today's world. Okay. Hold hands, reach out, grab the help that you need, and it will bring you forward. Divine guidance will show you the way. You understand? I hope you do. So that's the reading we have here if you chose number two. Now we'll move on to the last card right here, the last signifier. Let me put these back inside the deck here. And there. Now, the last card, if that's what you chose, the signifier for this dyadic cross is the Ace of Pentacles. This is a great big offer of value. This is saying, okay, let's go ahead and do it. Here you go. This is what you do. Everything you need is right here. You can do it. Notice that this offer is on the other side of the gate, the other side of the portal. Okay. You have to do your part. You have to trot down the path. You have to throw open the doors and then you can come over here and receive the blessing of this value of this, uh, this that you need. Okay. So now we'll shuffle up the cards a bit to see if uh, what the rest of this uh, works out to be. So this is a great big 
offer of value, but listen, we all have to do our part to get a move on uh, with all of these things. Nothing, nothing, well, I won't say that nothing will happen by itself. Something will happen by itself, but you just will be in less control of how it moves along. Sometimes, even if you make a poor decision, if you start off on the wrong foot, it's still better than not starting off at all. Okay? So, let's see. What do we get for the last uh, five cards? We'll take one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, we're done with these cards. And now we'll see how we finish off this dyadic cross right here. So we've got the Ace of Pentacles, a big offer of moving forward. You got to get going. Let's do it. The challenge to that, though, is, ah, the Hermit. And the Hermit is just that. He's introspective. He's taking his time. He's gingerly deciding once he's looked at the path and it's been clear to him uh, what step to take um, uh, with this big plan, this big staff to help him get moving. Uh, he's decided, okay, let's go ahead and, and at least move a foot forward. Just like I said, you've got to get going. The uh, base of this reading is the chariot. Okay, so what is this? The chariot is uh, is talking to us about a major arcana. It's talking to us about things uh, needing to be under control and, and needing to get moving. So this fellow here with his wand, he's getting ready to, to move these sphinx forward. He's got one that's looking toward him for, for guidance, and he's got the other one that's just being a little bit stubborn, and he's getting ready to say, hey, let's get going. Let's, let's get up and move this on. So that was the past of this. The hesitancy uh, was the past of this reading, but the inevitability is that it will move forward. This is not going to stay uh, uh, stationary. This is going to go. In the uh, past of this reading is the uh, Five of Swords. And, you know, swords of truth, power, justice, uh, rules. And uh, here we've got a fellow who has grabbed up some of these swords. You know, typically this is uh, feeling um, uh, cheated, uh, feeling taken advantage of, uh, maybe an abuse of power. It could be someone has done this to you, or you may be doing this to someone else, and you may realize it, you may not realize it. And the person who maybe uh, uh, you feel, if it is that you feel that you've been taken advantage of, may not realize that they've taken advantage of you. So this person is looking back as if with a question to say, really? Okay. And this fellow is saying, yeah. I've got all this under control. I'm taking all the swords. I might leave a couple down here, but for right now, I'm standing guard. So this is feeling this is feeling abused a little bit, okay? A little taken advantage of somebody. Could be you, could be whoever else is involved in this, uh, one person or many persons. Uh, the sky of this reading, then, is the Page of Swords. And uh, so remember, that's what we're aspiring towards. And the Page of Swords is the lowest of the court cards, but he's the guy that really kind of gets things going. He brings an idea to the front and says, hey, this is the truth. These are the rules. Uh, this is the justice, and uh, this is what I've got for you. I brought it this far, and I'm proud of it, and uh, and I've rushed in, and so let's make a move on this. So that's the Page of Swords. The uh, likely outcome for all of this, then, is the Queen of Wands, and I always like to say this Queen of Wands is a confident woman of planning, of motion. She's going to make this happen. She feels inspired, and she's getting ready to get up and get it done. So great answer for that great big yes card. Okay, so that's been our choices today, and I hope that helps some of you. So that's the three-card oracle for you today. I hope you found it meaningful. I hope that you got some good uh, answers out of there. If you didn't, you know, it just wasn't for you today. Don't worry about it. Um, or come back to it a little bit later. Um, it may apply to someone that you care about. So try that. See you next time. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now.